Wes mentioned we've been giving out a bunch of uh, ACC awards. We'll continue to do that Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, and one of the recipients is joining us right now. Richard Yergin up in beautiful Chestnut Hill. Richard, good morning. How are you? Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing well. Outstanding. First of all, congratulations on the uh, Brian Piccolo Award. Uh, you have really been through the gamut, the highs and the lows of what a student athlete goes through. I'm sure as you look back at uh, your career, uh, there's probably a smile on your face about what this sport and uh, really what a quality education will give you. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, just to speak on that, uh, I've become a, a big supporter of, you know, seeking out your education and, you know, taking care of your health first. And, you know, keeping those two things in perspective allows you to uh, play the game uh, freely. And uh, that's what I've been able to do. Um, and I'm just blessed to be able to, to do that. Richard, uh, the story itself of obviously a very difficult automobile accident, you go through the rehab process, you're a student coach, you're engaged, you have a son, you're going to go to work, and then all of a sudden you get the clearance to say, hey, if you want to play again, you can play again. I mean, that almost had to feel like a, you know, a swing on the house, so to speak, right? Absolutely. Um, and, you know, with every, <clears throat> with every great – opportunity uh, you have to make a decision on you know what is best for you and uh, and, and for me uh, the easy route would have been okay you don't have to play again you could easily choose to you know go on and you know do other things but uh, that burning passion and desire well within me is what led me back to play football Richard when you were coaching how difficult mm -hmm. was that? Because obviously you were still involved with the game, but man, the players are still players. So was was that hard being a coach? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you know, any coach that uh, is a coach now, the one thing that they always say is, "Man, I wish I could play this game." Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have no idea how good you have it to be able to run around out there um, and just play for one another, and. You know, not having that brotherhood of being out there with those guys physically on the field, um, you know, it just, it did something to my spirit that I honestly can't put into words, but uh, I miss that. And uh, that's one of the great things about being able to be a player is it's a brotherhood, it's a bond that you can't really, uh, you can't really substitute for anything. You know, Richard, this award was uh, – the Brian Piccolo Award was first honored 1970 uh, mm -hmm. to recognize Brian Piccolo, who was not only the ACC Player of the Year, was also a, a tremendous football player at Wake Forest. In fact, he's uh, – your, he's your godfather, right? Yes. Yeah. Brian Piccolo was in school with Mark's dad at Wake Forest in the early 60s, and my dad actually did Brian Piccolo's football games on radio for Wake Forest in the 1960s. So we, we have a bit of a kinship to this honor. But I, I've often asked players who've won this, and I'll ask you the same question. It goes to the ACC's most courageous football player. And I'll ask you, do you feel courageous? Honestly, I'm just doing the best with what God has given me. Um, mm -hmm. Throughout this process, I have yet to really think about uh, you know, how courageous what I've done is. It's just kind of been my life, you know, for the past two years. Uh, just kind of the way I was raised, the way I was brought up. Mm. Um, you know, I may bend, but I won't fold. And, uh, you know, just that's just kind of been my mentality. Uh, but I, I do appreciate being recognized as a courageous individual. Um, but, mm. you know, I, I don't think that, you know, I'm Superman or that I'm, ba that I'm Batman. <laughs> you know, with the cape on. But if people view me that way, then, you know, I've always wanted to be a superhero, but I, I, I more so take liking to the underdogs. You also mentioned here just a minute ago that you maybe have a different perspective on education and the value of the right. degree. What's that year right. at Boston College been like after going through what has now become fairly commonplace in college football, especially major college football, and that's the transfer portal, to end up at Boston College and to have a chance at – enhancing your education what's what's that meant to you uh, I just think it's been like a cherry on top uh, you know obviously Clemson provided a great foundation of my education uh, with my undergraduate in business administration and 
my master's in athletic leadership and, uh, you know, coming up to Boston uh, to add on a master's in healthcare policy and to be able to play football again. Uh, I think that's every kid in America's dream. And I think that uh, I, I got to give myself some credit here. Uh, I, I honestly, I love school. I'm kind of mm -hmm. a nerd. <laughs> and, you know, I, I honestly, that's something that I, I have a hard time, like, admitting to people. That, you know, I love to read. I love all this different stuff. And, you know, to be able to put this on national display, um, this story about, you know, someone who continuously sought out their education no matter what and took advantage of the opportunities that were there, I think speaks volumes, um, you know, for who I am as a person. and. The example that I'm trying to set for my son and kids, you know, coming up behind me. And I think it's just very important to highlight that fact. And I appreciate you asking me that question. Richard, you mentioned starting off your career at Clemson and finishing it off at Boston College. Uh, I was at the game this year in Death Valley and thought of you because I'm thinking, man, of all the experiences you've had with the Tiger Paw on the helmet and championships and rubbing Howard's rock and coming down the hill, now you come rolling in there as a Boston College Eagle that had to be bizarre right. going to the other locker room and knowing what you're getting ready to experience later that night. I mean, it was so surreal. Uh, you know, the last time I've been in the locker room of the visitors had been a long time. <laughs> and uh, to, to be in there preparing for a game and not to be in the home locker room, uh, it did have a, a weird plot to us to it. But uh, nonetheless, you know, I, I came there to, to do a job. And, uh, you know, I, I love the people that I came there with and, you know, just as well as I love the people that I was going against. So it was a very, uh, it was an emotional game for me, um, I would say, when it came down to it. But, but at the end of the day, it was, a, it was an experience that I'll never forget. Well, I, I've got to believe that you still kind of stay in contact with some of those guys. And along those lines, uh, you know, you, you still pull for them, I guess, to a degree, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, being a two-time alum and a two-time national champion at that university and that institution, creating the lifelong relationships that I did with uh, a great leader and Coach Dabo mm -hmm. Sweeney um, and athletic director uh, Dan Radakovich and our president Jim Clements, having those relationships with those figures, uh, you know, those don't go away simply because I make a business decision, you know, mm -hmm. for myself that I want to play football again and I do it somewhere else. Uh, you know, and with all due respect, um, you know, I'm here at Boston College now, but like you said, you know, I still support uh, Clemson and that, that entire fan base, you know, for sticking by me and all the supporters of that university and uh, just trying to do things the right way um, and, and, and just, you know, in, in an uncommon situation, produce uncommon results. And so, you know, mm -hmm. what, I, what I've done is, is I've, I've, I've leveraged both platforms uh, to the best of my ability. And, you know, I, I'm just trying to change the narrative around college football. Yeah. Richard, you mentioned uh, superheroes. Uh, which one would best describe you and your career? <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you noticed the jacket that I have on. Yeah. But yeah. here at Boston College, um, Wells Crowthers, he was an uh, outstanding lacrosse player, I believe. And, um, yep. you know, he, on, on the day of 9-11, he saved uh, multiple people that were in the burning towers um, up in New York. And since, since I've heard about that, at the t since the time I've been at Clemson, that's always been someone that I've looked up to because actually I had an opportunity to play against Boston College in that game in 2016 when they had it here. And then obviously I played in it on 9-11 versus Kansas. So to me, uh, coming to Boston College and being able to wear the symbol of the red bandana as a player here, um, and represent a guy like Wells Crowther, uh, you know, that exemplified courage and faith on that particular day, uh, saving a countless amount of lives and putting his, um, you know, at the back burner. And, you know, obviously he didn't make it. Uh, you know, that, that to me is kind of how I try to live my life uh, ever since, you know, I've, I found out about, I have found out about that. I tell you what, that's a that's a pretty awesome answer. Yeah, that is an awesome answer. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in Charlotte. We offer you congratulations on winning the Brian Piccolo Award, as announced today by the Atlantic Coast Conference, and uh, look forward yes, to what's next for Richard Jurgen. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it.